I don't understand why you won't get in front of the camera and explain to the United States why this tree is special to you. There's a cinematography there. There is a level of that. Nothing else moves, and that moves. That's why it's special. Is that why it's special? So what about if those other trees weren't there and it was just this pine? It wouldn't be as special. It wouldn't be as special. It wouldn't. Okay. It just wouldn't. But you're saying the movement in the branches. With the stillness around it. And the fog. And the fog. And the fog. Okay. It's, it's, it pops, right? It, move, it pops when it wouldn't normally pop. The one right in the center there. Yeah. Is there any other pine trees? What about this guy over here? Not so much. Because he's further back, but, or why the position to the road? It's, it's not, not as wispy. Not as wispy. But this one in the center, I, I gotta admit, I mean, it's different from the surrounding trees immediately. Do you think we could do a YouTube video on this tree? Maybe. Maybe. With this view? Yeah. With this view. Yeah, let me see. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Just another camping trip. Lovely weather. So super awesome. Welcome back everybody. Brad here again. Thank you so much for joining us. As you could see from that prior clip, this trip started off just a little bit interesting. Not only did we have downpouring rain, we were also running a couple hours late to the meeting spot. So we were just a little bit stressed when we got into camp, but we were able to find um, the other guys coming out with us. And as you'll see here, we had just a great time getting out into the woods. We were super fortunate on this trip to have Corey out with us. Um, he lives in the area. He's been out to this the National Forest, George Washington National Forest, many times. And, and did just a fantastic job finding just some sweet campsites within the National Forest. Now I'm camera shy because I don't know how to even process you put that. It on the, you just put it on the spot. Yeah, and I don't know how to process that. Just, yeah, all that's good stuff. Just be filming that. I'll put that in. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what's wrong with that guy, Corey? <laughs> this is why people don't take him anywhere. There were a couple things right off the bat that made this trip different. Uh, number one, we got a rooftop tent that we got to try out. Um, also, we were towing a off-road trailer on this trip. And, and thirdly, this was kind of a guy's trip. We ended up, this was just uh, my son Caleb and I out with Corey, Kyle, and Evan. So it really turned into just a guy's weekend. Yeah, I gotta ask. This, this setup has changed maybe twice. Mm -hmm. It ended up that our first night, we didn't have any more rain, so most of the rain had moved out. So um, had a good night's sleep in our rooftop tents. Next morning, uh, we made breakfast, and the plan for that day was to do Flagpole, which is a trail out in Virginia in the George Washington National Forest, um, where you head up to an elevation. I think it's around 4,400 feet. That's Evans. I grabbed Evans' egg. Uh, I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> your eggs are broken, Evans. <laughs> they don't break. What's wrong with your eggs? <laughs> he told me too. Like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> so I played host <laughs> and chef, and this was me trying to uh, cook breakfast, crack open eggs that had already been hard boiled. So once I figured out the right eggs, we got on to breakfast which ended up being uh, breakfast tacos with some sausage, eggs, and cheese. After we packed up camp, we continued down uh, the trails. The, the plan, like I said, for, for 
this night was to make it up to flagpole and actually camp on top of flagpole um, which is again around 4400 feet um, just so happened here in just a second i hopped out to switch my gopro view to kind of get it up top and we found something interesting this happened This is why, Corey, I should... No, I this don't, is why we don't take you anywhere. Look at that, man. I just... Too much for it. So we've been dragging for a little bit, I guess. I just started hearing it. Yeah, but it's been happening since way back there. Way back? Like you since can, the creek? You can see it dragging like the whole time. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a Hemi. What do you want me to tell you? I, mean, I, I, mean, I can't even tell it's back there. Nice, I can't even tell it's, it's back like there. Trailer. Like, did you put a trailer <laughs> back there? Yeah. So somewhere along the trail, when we headed out in the morning, we ended up losing the hitch pin um, that was holding the trailer on. Um, not sure how that happened. I ended up having a spare hitch pin that we were able to kind of swap out. But for a while, it looked like we were just being uh, riding with our safety chains. So always use your safety chains. But um, other than just some extra noise, I really didn't even notice. But apparently, I had been dragging this trailer um, for quite a while. So. Anyway, that's the Hemi for you. I know. So the drive up to Flagpole from where we were at uh, really wasn't bad. There, there are just some kind of loose rocks, but you could be certainly at a stock ride height and get through it okay if you've got a Grand Cherokee. Uh, Corey, his rig actually was still in the shop from when he went out with us in Roush Creek and he ended up having just a stock uh, Wrangler Sport out with us and, and, and did not fine the whole weekend. So it's not really a super technical trail. We also had the opportunity on the way up to stop by Switzer Lake, which is just kind of this little mountain lake. Um, there was a clip of it in the opening for this video, uh, but all in all the ride up was not bad trees here had not quite started to, to bud and to bloom so I imagine if you hit it a little bit later in the spring it's probably just a just a gorgeous ride up so kind of starting out this day this was my second day pulling Corey's trailer and it just seemed a little bit louder and and also seemed like the the high lift jack on the trailer kept kind of vibrating back and forth and I had mentioned that fact to Corey but he seemed like you know it was okay, it was supposed to rattle, um, but sure enough, three quarters of the way up, the, the high lift jack just straight up fell off the trailer. So, so here the guys are coming back down after I told them that we had just lost our high lift jack. Here for the top 15, and we'll also take a peek back like, at 2010, here on the Pulse. Just rattling off. <laughs> I, it hasn't touched a thing. <laughs> It just fell off, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fortunately, we were able to recover the high lift jacket safely uh, because we were going to need it a little bit later. Um, but this is a view kind of coming up to flagpole towards the top. Obviously, things got very, very foggy. Um, and unfortunately, when we got to the actual peak of flagpole this day, we really weren't able to see anything. Uh, because the visibility was so poor. Yeah. All right, guys, we made it up to camp. We are top of flagpole in Virginia. It's a nice, I mean, it was a nice, easy trail coming up. I had the trailer behind me, um, which did really well on uh, an off-road trail. I think it's by Vector Off-Road. We did have a uh, high lift jack fall off the back, um, but we recovered that without too much of an incident. Um, but we settled into camp here. There's a fog rolling in. It is supposed to rain tonight, uh, several hours. But for now, it's just kind of a foggy, foggy afternoon. I think we're at right around 4,300 feet. Um, so we're up just a little bit. I think it'll probably be cooler tonight than it was last night. Uh, but yeah, we're just sitting around the campfire, enjoying camp, and then we'll we'll get some dinner going later. One of our favorite times for these three days and these weekends is just what you're seeing here. That time around the campfire, the time to get to know people. Um, it's, it's just such a cool transition to see people that were just strangers just a few hours ago um, who have been through 
already some experiences between camping and the trails and just see people be able to kind of come together around campfires and, and just to be able to share a little bit of their story uh, with each other. In Greece, for example, we never had... All right, guys, we made it through the night last night up on flagpole. We had solid, solid rain for about five hours. Um, the tent actually did very well and didn't get wet inside, which um, I was very pleased with to stay dry, uh, but it did a great job. And then after the rain were winds. Um, so we didn't get a ton of sleep last night, but we got camp kind of packed up here. Uh, we had some pancakes this morning and we're gonna hit the trail and try to make our way to Peter's Mill, which is a Jeep Badge of Honor trail. So let's keep rolling. Kind of the view from the top or from our campsite. Not such a bad place to make camp. Once we had camp all packed up, it took us a couple hours to work our way down from flagpole and then actually hop on the high highway and drive about an hour north to get to Peter's Mill run. Um, Peter's Mill is, like I said, a Jeep Badge of Honor. It is very much an easy Jeep Badge of Honor trail. You can do this trail in stock vehicles um, without really any kind of difficulty. There are some offshoots off of it to um, kind of if you want to play around a little bit that are a little more challenging but trail tends to get a little more narrow when you do this and, and pinstriping can occur. Um, this was the first time I'd actually towed a trailer through a Jeep Badge of Honor trail um, so for me it was just a little bit more challenging than I think it would have been. Here you see Kyle and then Evan kind of taking one of those little offshoots I was talking about. Again, even the offshoots aren't any kind of crazy going on, but it kind of breaks the trail up and it's fun to play around in the mud. And it, I think things probably were pretty wet when we were out there given all the rain we had. So we are still doing Peter's Mill. It's been honestly a little more than I thought it was going to be. It's, I think, but, but because we're towing a trailer. So this is the first time I'm towing a trailer down a off-road trail. So lots of shaking and squeaking behind us and, and getting used to new sounds.
drunk driver. Okay, you're going to hold that line. Come a little passenger. Slow. You're, here's the dip. Here's the dip. Little bit dry. Ooh, let me get out of the way. Okay, now you're, you're good. So you're there, but watch your back end. Okay, so easy on the back end. But that line's good. Just, are you still in hill descent? Okay, nice and slow. Slow, slow, slow. Here it is. There you go. We should skinny pedal right now. So we got our first flat and it was our sidewall. Coming in here, I had one sidewall that had a flat that I've been wanting to get changed out. But we just bumped a little bit side on the sidewall, probably at a similar spot to where we were and boom, it went. Heard it right away. So we get to practice switching out tires again. This is Corey. Helping us out with a different high lift, the monster high lift. So we're a little on a little bit of incline. So we're a little wary of that, but we tried to get up off the trail. So if you're ever in this situation, you want to try to get on as level sturdy ground as you can, especially if you're using a high lift jack. Here we had to kind of get off the trail. Um, and I don't know if you can tell here, but the high lift was just a little bit slightly angled downhill, which uh, we were a little uncomfortable with, um, but it ended up working out okay. Uh, but just definitely you want to keep that in mind uh, yeah so there's my gash i thought it was where i already had one we hit a corner of a rock coming around and just enough to puncture the sidewall here's the one i thought went but no it's not that it's this but it's dead so anyway we got the got it changed out and so hopefully we can finish the trail without another flat there I do. yeah with another flat so we were actually able to finish the trail without incident. We were definitely like three quarters of the way through when the flat happened. Um, but we got out, made it out of Peter's Mill run without further incident. Um, and really after that, we aired up and we headed back home. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've not yet become a subscriber of our channel and you like this video, uh, I encourage you to watch some others, and if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, and we will see you guys again real soon.